welcome back to another EDH Deck Tech. Uh, today I've got something a little bit outside of my wheelhouse that is uh, essentially green. Uh, so I have been playing this Dina deck for a little bit now. I wanted something that was a bit more budget uh, and something that I could play kind of around that pre-con uh, level. You know, people were having pre-cons, especially, you know, currently, you know, with Nuka Penna and things like that, you know, people were getting the pre-cons, playing with the pre-cons before they start upgrading them and, and things like that. So I wanted something that was a bit more um, at that level. Um, so I did kind of decide, okay, let's make something a bit more reduced in power, plus also make it budget. You know, I don't want to necessarily spend a lot of money. Um, the only caveat is that uh, I had the lands, um, I had them already, uh, so they, I guess, would be, you know, upgraded. Those are kind of what I feel is ideal lands. Uh, but outside of that, uh, the actual, the rest of the cards, the rest of the two thirds of the deck, um, you know, I, I kind of went for a hundred dollar budget. That's kind of the budget that I set, 100 US dollars. Uh, so yeah, so Dina Soul Seeper. Um, this one's quite a powerful commander if you want to kind of combo off. There's a lot of uh, combos that you can do with this one, including, uh, you know, Exquisite Blood, uh, Sanguine Bond, that kind of stuff. Uh, essentially, your you know, with Exquisite Blood, you're gaining life, losing life, gaining life, losing life, you know, uh, that kind of just continues on. But I don't have that uh, in this deck. Um, I wanted to kind of try to maximize on the Dean, the first part of Dina, uh, which is essentially gaining life so that my opponents will lose their life. The thing about Dina is that it doesn't matter how much life that is. It's whatever, once you gain life, they're gonna lose one life. Um, so, you know, it's, it kind of reduces that power in that level um so you want i i tried to aim for like uh lots of increments of at least you know one life um so there won't be you know big life gains there's lots of little increments of one life to start windling down your opponents there is also a sack outlet um something that's kind of secondary uh there is a bit of uh sacrifice theme going on or a bit of death trigger theme going on um so it's nice to have that sacrifice um on your commander as well and the good thing is dina's super cheap all right so we'll go through the deck so first up is essentially all the life gain effects there's also different ways to do it uh in black that a lot of it really rolls around you know your your creatures dying um it's good that we have a sacrifice outlet so first up death greeter um whenever another creature is put into a graveyard from play you gain one life right so it's going to get a lot of triggers again it's just hitting that one life so then dina then does one life uh to everyone uh, Essen Warden, uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, gain one life. Again, so you're going to see that theme kind of running along. These are super cheap. You want them out as soon as possible. Um, you know, they're going to trigger, Dina's going to trigger, and so forth. Uh, JD Offshoot. Uh, so this one is a landfall. Essentially, you're going to gain one life. I do have a bit of a sub landfall theme where it's relevant to gain life. Um, so you will see a few of those landfall themes as well. But we are in green, so that's good. Uh, Throw Parasite and also Basilica Screecher are in here for essentially the same reason as they give Extort. Uh, so Extort's another one. In, in kind of budget decks, you want somewhere to kind of put your mana, uh, especially as the game kind of gets on. Um, so having Extort to put some mana into is quite nice. So, you know, uh, Basilica Screecher has flying. Uh, it's one, two for two. Uh, Throw Parasite has, uh, you know, you can pay two life to remove a counter they're not really relevant abilities the fact is they just have extort getting them down early and then getting dina and going from there so silica screech the same thing uh blood artist so i do run a lot of these effects where uh if another creature dies we're going to gain one and the opponent's going to lose one and then they're going to lose another one with dina uh kanzandu nectar pot uh same thing landfall gain one life and it's a creature, which means it could be sacrificed. Um, Prosperous, Prosperous Innkeeper. Uh, it creates a tre treasure token, so a nice little ramp. Uh, but when another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we get life. Scavenging Ooze, a bit of graveyard hate. Um, and, you know, of course, gaining that life. But the graveyard hate is quite nice. Uh, Tablet of the Guilds. So I run very few artifacts or colorless. So it's going to hit a lot 
of the deck um essentially it's going to hit you know uh what is that 60 at least 60 percent uh over 60 percent of the deck um so you'll pick black and and green and then you're, you're going to get at least one if not two left Valentine Dean of the Vein. So nice little one where it's going to exile um, our opponent's creatures, uh, which is nice. Um, and we can pay two for pests. And pests are great. Uh, there's a little bit of a pest theme as well in this deck because pests, um, you're going to gain that life, which means your opponent's going to lose life. Uh, you're going to get that um, death trigger as well um, on a lot of things. So having pests is quite nice. Um, so, you know, Dean is, is great. Uh, there is the other commander on the other side, but it's not relevant. Zulpur Cutthroat just another blood artist effect we're going to gain that life our brain's going to lose life and then lose life again that's you know remember it's the same thing this one creates us a token which is quite nice um so we can you know sacrifice that as well uh blight mount so we don't have a lot of tokens a lot of it is actual non-token creatures so just getting the pest is quite nice pests attacking with menace sure whatever um but it's nice just to get pests out Callous Blood Mage. So with this one, this one's just nice and versatile. It's three mana. Um, if we need to, we can exile that graveyard. We can draw that card. Or if just we need something, we can just do pests, which is nice. Of course, for a crew fix, we have a bit of a landfall uh, theme going on. So, you know, we want to hit those lands and then those lands will now give us one life, which is nice. Morning Bright please, uh, Bright Blight priest sorry uh three two um whenever i gain life each opponent loses life so it's just a backup dina you know dina gets removed sometimes it's nice to have a backup or start hitting them for two retreat to hagra uh this one's a landfall um target creature gains death touch and plus one plus oh i just don't do um each opponent loses one life and i gain one life essentially so you know the dina can do do that uh, whenever land and a battlefield with retreat to Kazander, uh, you gain two life. So you're going to gain two life. Your opponent's going to then lose one life with Dina. Vito, Thorn of the Dust Rose. This is just a sanguine bond. Uh, whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So this one is target opponent. Um, so do keep that in mind. But essentially, you're going to gain life. Your target opponent's going to lose that much life. And then, you know, Dina's also going to trigger and hit everyone for one. Falcon Wrath, Falcon Wrath Noble, um, target player loses one life and we gain one life. Again, just like Blood Artist, Vindictive Vampire, just like Zilpor Cutthroat, uh, just bigger version. Vraska, Golgari Queen. It This one's nice. Uh, four manas, cheap enough. Um, we have a lot of random blockers, pests and stuff, uh, but the sacrifice another permanent. Uh, you know, so we're going to get that death trigger and we're going to get a life and we're going to draw a card, which is great. And then it's got um, abrupt decay as it's negative three. And the negative nine is, is okay. We're not really an attacking uh, focused deck. I've never got my loyalty up that high, uh, but it's nice as a, I guess a threat. Sanguine Bond just to help uh, with Dina. Whenever you gain life, your opponent's going to lose that much life. A lot of it will be increments of one, but uh, it's still nice just to add add that up. Uh, Pontiff of Blight. Uh, so just here for Extort, it's going to give all of our other creatures Extort. So, you know, we can really start hitting people's life totals because each one will be separate triggers, uh, which will then um, trigger... Dina, of course. So, you know, quite nice. Uh, there is a four mana extort creature, um, but essentially I I didn't opt to play that one. So I've just got this and, and the two others. Belladrus Ritherbroom. This is, I think, the most expensive card in the deck. Uh, seven mana, four, four flying. Uh, and the beginning of each upkeep, we're going to get those pests. So pests are really great because, you know, we can sacrifice them and uh, we're going to gain that one life. And the nice little pay 10 life to untap our lands. You know, I have done it sometimes, but uh, it's not particularly the, the main focus of this card. It's really just to get those pests out so I can start sacrificing them and gain a life. Okay, so that's the life gain part of the deck. So just a bit of value. Uh, we are in green, so we're gonna play Internal Witness. Uh, we have a lot of things going to the graveyard. So just kind of getting a bit of recursion is nice. And Vein Witch Coven, uh, Menace 3-3. Three, three. 
uh, whenever we gain life, we can pay it black and we can return something to from the graveyard to our hand. So just a bit of recursion, which is quite nice. Bit of a some win cons. So outside of Dina, Dina is obviously going to hit our opponent's life totals, but you know increments of one can get a bit tough. So there is Great Merchant of Asphodel to help kind of um, hit everyone for a much larger uh, value. You know you're kind of hoping for like maybe devotion um, of ten or something like that would be quite nice uh, once you've kind of got people's life totals down. And then Wound Reflection. Uh, this was really the inspiration about building this deck. Uh, this really starts to hit people's life totals uh, because it's at the end of each end step or the beginning of each end step. Um, and you know, your opponents are going to be attacking each other as well. Uh, so this is quite nice and really starts to end the game. Okay. So those are fun cards. Uh, we are in green, so we've got ramp. Now I did try to focus on uh, more creature ramp. Um, so elves of deep shadow uh, gives us a black, but you know, deals one damage to us, but we've got some life gain, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Elvish mystic taps for green, Finhorn elves taps for green, and then Lanawa elves also taps for green. So just super cheap mana dorks all the all the mana dorks uh secure tribe elder uh sacrifices itself so it's great uh and then i've got cultivate um this one nice because it also draws us the additional card for our landfall effects uh far haven elf um, comes in we just get another basic kadama's reach again just like cultivate it gets us that card for the next turn's um landfall uh, and then pristine talisman just uh it taps for colors but it gains us life which is nice and then wood elves as the other one this one does search for a forest uh which you put into play okay so that's a ramp uh so card draw um you know we're a bit, bit more budget but uh, i did squeeze a nice whisper in i do love this card it's just simple two mana draw two to lose two Plot the Forbidden, you know, when we start getting those pests down, uh, this can actually draw us quite a lot of cards, and then we're going to lose that life, but we've got some life game to um, help with that. Sign in Blood, nice simple one. Target player draws two and lose two. Dark Prophecy, so, you know, we do have a lot of creatures dying. We have our Sacrifice Outlet in our Command Zone. Uh, so, you know, it's nice to have that card draw, and we lose a life. Dark Tutelage. Um, this one's a bit of a bit of a pet card. I really like this one, um, but this is definitely no dark confidant. Um, you know, this is an enchantment, so it kind of sticks around for much longer, uh, and it can really start to hurt. The good thing with dark confidant is that you can, you know, sacrifice it whenever you want. Uh, but with this, you know, enchantment, I don't really have any way of getting out of it. So once you play it, it's out there, um, and it can do some damage. But you know, I tried to keep the uh, mana value down um, so that this doesn't hurt. But I have really enjoyed this card. This is such a fun card. Grim Horror Specs, uh, creatures are dying. We have a lot of non-tokens uh, that will die. So um, nice to get that card draw. And then Midnight Reaper also the same. Um, then Read the Bones, just simple, classic, scry two, draw two, lose two. Greed, uh, another one just to kind of help uh, sink our mana into uh, and just play that black. We are mostly a black deck. So, you know, having that black is fine. Um, we have the life gain to offset it. Then harmonize, just simple, four mana, draw three. Uh, well of Lost Dreams. So whenever we gain life, we can pay X, uh, and uh, which is the amount of life that we gained, and then draw X cards. Usually, I don't play this kind of card, even in a life gain uh, deck, only because what happens is you gain five life, then you pay five and then you've essentially paid all your mana and you get all these cards, but you don't have the mana to use it. The good thing is that uh, in increments of only gaining one life, I can pay X, see what that card is, see, okay, can I play something else to gain another life? So I'm just playing increments of one, uh, which I found to just be nice because then I have the most maximum information, uh, most maximum information, sure. Um, you know, so I, I've actually kind of liked it. And then Moldavine Reclamation. Whenever a creature you control dies, you gain one life. Again, triggering Dina. Uh, and you draw a card. So this one's been quite nice as well. So removal. Uh, pest Infestation. Um, so 
you pay XX and you get twice as many pests. Uh, so I, I, I've usually paid like, th so it's been X has been one or two. So essentially uh, three or five mana. It's usually what I pay for it. Um, so you'll get rid of one or two um, artifacts. Um, so which is, you know, over costed, but you're getting twice as many pests. So if you're paying X is two, you're gonna get four pests. Four pests have I found to be quite nice. Um, so yeah, re really, really nice on this one. Gulgari Charm, just a bit versatile, uh, you know, can help with some tokens or get rid of an enchantment or just help, you know, if there's a board wipe or something. Fernal Grass, just a simple um, targeted removal just on a, a creature and we're gonna lose life. Beast Within hits, you know, whatever permanent we want and they just get a token, that's great. Reclamation Sage, so hitting a, an artifact or enchantment, it is a creature, so it's great that we can sacrifice it later. Hagra Mauling, this is a land on the other side, so, uh, you know, this can just be nice. It's just an additional removal spell. Uh, Mortality Spear, uh, this one I found to be really quite easy to trigger. You know, we'll get that one increment of life, and then this is just two mana destroying non-land permanent, which has been really, really nice. Ravenous Shiva Carver, just to destroy targeted creature, uh, and of course, it's something I can sacrifice later. And which of the Moors? So it has Death Touch, 4-4, uh, and at the beginning of the end step, if I gain life, which, you know, is relatively simple in this deck, especially, you know, it's increments of one, and there's a lot of just, like, permanents that will trigger to gain one life, um, we're going to return a creature from our graveyard. Of course, we're sacrificing our creatures, uh, and then we're going, each opponent's going to sacrifice this, right? Yeah, sacrifice a creature, and then we're going to return one. So it's quite nice. So some board wipes, Massacre Girl, one I've really enjoyed. We have a lot of like pests and, and things like that. So, you know, this essentially wipes the board and we're left with a 4-4. So that's great. Again, it's a creature we can get back. Deadly Tempest, it, it is hard to find budget um, board wipes, I guess, um, for two color, mainly black decks. Um, so I have gone with Deadly Tempest. So each player is going to lose life equal to the number of creatures just to help pad with, with life totals. Uh, but of course, you don't want to play this when you have a lot of your creatures with pests and stuff. And then Necromantic Selection. I mean, I, this one's another pet card. I do love this one. Uh, you know, it destroys all creatures and then you're going to get one of them back and one of those could be somebody's commander. Um, how state-based um, actions work with the now I well new commander death rules I guess but uh, I guess they're old now um you know you're going to get someone's commander back and they're going to check to see okay whether I should put it in the command zone but it's not going to be there um so I really really like this I think you know four mana wiping the board and three mana stealing somebody's commander quite nice so making that seven mana total pretty good okay so that's all the the main uh, and then I've just got lands so Blooded Woodland uh, just gets me some some lands, which is nice. Get those landfall effects. Paduka Bog is some graveyard hate. Great command tower, obviously to hit your lands. So these are not uh, necessary budget cards. I did not consider budget for the land. Um, you can obviously put in whatever you know land configuration you like. I think you know with two colors, it's it's not too hard. Uh, but I did kind of put this one in. So uh, there we got the pathway. Then we got the Death Cap Glade, which is great. Um, I've got Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Terra Expanse in here for landfall. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need these, I would say normally, especially in a two color deck, but I've just got it in for some landfall. Ghost Quarter, um, do always run some kind of land destruction land in your deck. Uh, strip mine for your budget, uh, if you've got the budget or, or wasteland. Uh, but Ghost Quarter fits nicely into, you know, a budget build. Gulgari Rod Farm, uh, bounce land just to help with landfall. Grim Backwards, uh, just some card draw, also sack outlet. High Market, another sack outlet that gains us life, which is nice. Um, jungle hollow tap land that gains us life you know i should try to avoid how many tap lands i had but you know this one gains us life so it's on theme land of our waste it's going to deal damage to us but you know it's going to give us the colors uh, myriad landscape another one just to kind of help with landfall uh, nurturing peatland uh, you know if i need to i can sacrifice it to draw a card uh, overgrown tomb you know shock land great 
uh, this sap seed forest. Um, so it comes in tap. It is a forest, so it's something that I, I search for um, when I don't necessarily need a jewel land. Uh, and you're going to gain one life. Uh, two, you know, green permanents, one being Dina and one being something else. You know, it's not too hard. Tainted wood. Uh, if you control a swamp, you know, I'm going to have a lot of swamps. I'm mostly swamps. So, yeah, uh, this does, you know, usually stay as a jewel land. Uh, Temple of Malady, Scry comes in tapped. Terramorphic Expanse, searches for landfall. Twilight Mire helps fix us. Underground, uh, Undergrowth Stadium, uh, you know, fixing. Burn and Canicombs, fetch. It can fetch for the forest or the overgrown, the, the sap seed forest or the verdant uh, or the overgrown tomb or one of your basics woodland cemetery uh forest or swamp and then i've got four forests and eight swamps in the deck so that's my dina build uh again i tried to focus on a, a kind of a hundred dollars usd outside of the lands um really focusing on life gain in increments of one either through death triggers uh or landfall um as well as any other you know random uh gain one lives uh and then a lot of my card draw are based off you know those death triggers and, and things like that so um yeah I, I think there's obviously a lot of room that you can upgrade i think there's a lot of dina decks out there um that can focus on that upgrade i think really trying to ramp out that uh life gain effects and those those um uh increments of life gain uh is really challenging for dina um but you could just play exquisite blood and uh be happy and and just kind of win the game there as well um so you know tutors exquisite blood um, can really help uh, if you want to kind of upgrade the deck uh, further um, but there was a good, good challenge with um, you know trying to find increments of of life um, as as easy as possible so yeah so it's a deck uh, it's a lot of fun it's kind of around that pre-con ish level it has obviously more synergy than i would say a pre-con but um the, the cards aren't necessarily that that much more powerful than uh, a pre-con um and dina is nice and cheap uh and is threatening but uh not not that threatening um uh, but it has been a lot of fun to play uh so yeah thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed